Hey y'all, and good now, whenever and wherever this finds you. Well, I'm on my kick of let's not look at what they're showing us and look at what's real and what's really happening. So today, the focus is on our system versus other systems in the world. Where our system is based on cronyism, other systems are based on meritocracy. We think we have a, an election system, but it's 90% of the time whoever spends the most money wins the election, so uh, aren't we just having a bought government and then um, of those people that are elected, then they appoint the cronies. and. Um, so let's take a look at, uh, first off, we have a CIA spy, and uh, I can't say his name, but uh, I'll put it in the video. Let's see what he has to say. The executive, the president is also the executive for the entirety of the intelligence community. So he's the, the ultimate customer. If you look at it like a business, the customer, the person spending the money is the president and the director is the CEO. So if the, if the director doesn't create what the president wants, there's going to be a new director. That's why the director of CIA is a presidential appointed position. Sometimes they're extremely qualified. In that nexus of the world is, as it is and the world as you would like it to be. Um, this is hard. I mean, we're, we're really talking about intelligence at the highest levels of the U.S. government, setting the broad direction uh, for the nation. Excuse me, in a democratic republic, the highest levels of intelligent agencies are not supposed to be setting the broad policies for the entire nation. You just admitted that our country and its future is run by unelected, powerful bureaucrats. For intelligence professionals? Sometimes they're just professional politicians or... I, I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. It's, it was like, we, we, had, we had entire... We had entire training courses. Uh, it, uh, it, it, it reminds you of the, uh, uh, the glory of the American experiment. Soldiers that get put into that seat because the president trusts them to do what he wants them to do. Another uh, gaping area that causes problems, but that's still the way it is. So you think this is a problematic configuration of the whole system massive flaw in the system it is a massive flaw in the system because if you're essentially appointing a director to do what you want them to do then you're assigning a crony and that's what we define corruption as within the united states and inside the united states we say if you pick somebody outside of merit for any other reason other than merit then it's cronyism or it's nepotism here that's exactly what our structure is built on all presidential appointees are appointed on something other than merit so this explained why in the United States voting for the president feels so important to us because he's going to appoint the cronies and of course they supposedly have to get the support of the certain congress people and committees and whatnot and so forth I think they've proven themselves to be pretty much without integrity and it's a pretty much a good old boy system and it, like George Carlin said it's a big club and you ain't in it. So next we have Cyrus Chanson and he lived in China for 10 years. He lived in British Columbia for five years and now he, he considers himself an ambassador for America and China to get together. So let's see what he has to say. Now, generally speaking, Asian countries don't view elections as the most important part of democracy for one simple reason. Many Asian countries use a system of meritocracy. To advance up the political ranks, one must prove your worth. You must provide tangible and measurable results and you will be held accountable for your actions. This is very different than America where politicians have almost zero accountability and simply say whatever is needed to win votes and remain in power. So they lie. And not only in the United States do we have cronyism, but it's legal to lie. I mean, the news has been uh, 
judge to be able to to tell a lie because people should know better. Um, the police can lie because they should have known better. Uh, politicians lie all the time. So that's back to what they're telling us is basically lies and we need to look at what's really going on. So what is really going on? My view is that we live in an addicted culture, an addicted society. People are addicted to uh, social media, news media, and if not that, they're bogged down in, to earn a living and to live in this society where it's twice as much for half as much and if you miss a step you're out. However, since 2020, we've been in transition and it's clearer every day that more people are understanding the reality that we're in and looking for alternatives. However, many are still thinking that it's the alternative is to repair, fix this system or build off of this system. And, and that may be the way to uh, create a system alongside this system. So I, w I watched a video today called The Parallel Society versus Totalitarianism. It was in Easter Eastern Europe. And it was saying basically that that's, that was the reason that um, the Iron Curtain fell was that the people just started creating their own system so they could function even if the government failed and totally ignore the government and right. act outside the government. I'm, I'm calling for that. The Citizens Assembly, we pass, we get some legislation, we get a bunch of people to agree to it, and then we give it to the legislature and put pressure on them to pass it. And then eventually enough people will understand that we can actually write better legislation than what they're doing. And at that point, they'll just become functionaries. What's wrong with, I mean, the same way that, you know, the, the kings and queens, you know, are, are like just dignitaries. There. Let everybody run. Whoever wants to be our figurehead congressman, that's fine, as long as they're willing to be the people's rubber stamp. Right. So again, because making that change doesn't require amending the Constitution. And then uh, overlay that on top of this system so that we keep all the agencies and whatnot. But we get to a system of meritocracy where uh, we, the people, are determining are we getting what we want? And if we're not, then we say, change the appointment. Let the politicians be functionaries. But let's get back to uh, personal responsibility and um, looking at some of these ways that we can have citizens' legislation, distributive uh, voting. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, where we are right now is in a, still in a, place of personal transformation where people are realizing that um, their happiness, their well-being is their responsibility and it's a work in progress but it's something that you do every day and as more people realize the real revolution is this inside job where you reconnect to the spirit that's been hidden away for so long and regain that spontaneity and the joy of life and from that place raise the elevation to make new choices and more in line with your authenticity. And as this interior revolution takes place, it is my hope that we will see beyond the stories that we're being told into the reality to decide what is it that we actually can agree on um, on these so-called issues that they use to divide us when the reality is that they're extracting our wealth and controlling pretty much everything that's going on and as Teddy Roosevelt said, uh, it is the first duty of statesmen, in this case citizens, to disrupt and dissolve 
the unholy alliance between corrupt politicians and corrupt corporations. There's more to this, but that's what I got to say about that. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I'll see you down the road.